Hi there. In this video, we're turning this Figma design right here into this functional and responsive Shopify section in a matter of minutes and all without code. My name is Sam, one of the founders of Instant, and let's get started. The first step is downloading the Figma to Shopify with Instant plugin. This plugin is used by thousands of designers globally, and you can find it by going to instant.so to Figma to Shopify. And then when you click on get the free plugin, it will open the Figma community. And here you can download the Figma plugin. You can also download it straight from within the Figma community. Simply search Figma to Shopify and you will find this plugin. Then you can use the plugin and it's 100% free. Now let's go back to our Figma file. Here we have our Figma file and it's nicely structured. So all the layers have a name. And then within this section, there's just a couple of text elements right here, then a button. And on the right, we have a few images. Later on, when it's live in Shopify, I want these two images and the buttons within to link to these specific Shopify product collections. So the skincare product collection I have within my Shopify store and the makeup product collection. Then let's spin up the plugin. So if we go to the resources tab, then under plugins, we can find the Figma to Shopify with instant plugin. Now it's fired up. And then what we have to do is select a Figma design, then click on copy design. All the layers will be copied and then we're ready to paste this design within instant. Instant is the leading Shopify page builder where we can connect this Figma design to our Shopify products coming from our Shopify store, add effects and make it responsive. So let's go to Instant and right here with an Instant, we can right click and then paste in our Figma design. And here it is. And right here, you can also see what has just been done. So we pasted the design from Figma, we have matching fonts and we've uploaded two assets coming from Figma right into Instant. Now let's take a look at this section. So again, it's nicely structured. Also, all the layers have the same name, making it easy to continue where we left off. Now let's customize this section further and make it responsive and add our Shopify data. So right here, we have this text element. It's nice, but let's make it a little bit smaller. 65 should do the trick. Then for these collections, when we select the layer, we can see that there is a fill image, which is nice, but I don't want this. So let's delete the fill. And then within this row under insert, we drag in a image. There it is. We set the image to fill. And once again, fill for the height. Then we select the entire element again that holds the image and the small CTA. We go to Shopify content and then we can connect either Shopify products coming from my Shopify store or Shopify collections. In this case, I wanna work with collections. Then I find the skincare collection. It's now connected. We go back to the image, we scroll down and then we set the content of this image from static to dynamic. Now it's dynamic, meaning it will pull the Shopify content data right from Shopify to instant. Then for this little CTA or batch, we can go to interactions and then we can add a click action right here. And this click action can also go to the collection. So it will go to the collection of the skincare products. Open to new tab. Yes. Then let's select the makeup layer and we do the same thing. We delete the fill image and from the insert panel, we drag in a new image. We set this to fill and fill. Then for the entire element of makeup, we open Shopify content, then again, a collection and in this case, the makeup collection. We go to the image, we set the content source to dynamic. There it is. Then for the makeup CTA slash batch, we add an interaction, click action, go to collection and open a new tab. 
right now the width of this entire section is 440 pixels that's because the width of the figma design was also 440 pixels however the default width of instant is 1200 pixels so we need to make a few changes right now the main row that holds all the content is set to fit so it will make sure that it will fit all the content but we don't want this option. We want it to fill all the space that is available. So we set it to fill and then it snaps to the viewport width and it will make sure that all the content will fill the space that is available. Now let's select this content layer on the left. The width is set to 420 pixels. Let's change this to relative and then 50% meaning that it will occupy 50% of the space available. Then for the collections on the right, let's do the same thing. We set it to relative 50% and it will occupy 50% of the space available. Then there's quite some gap between these two elements and that's because the gap is set to 197. Let's change the gap to 100 and there it is. We zoom in a little bit more and this is starting to look really, really good. Now let's go to the laptop viewport, which has a width of 1024 pixels. And here again, we can make a few changes. Let's set the gap between these two elements even smaller to 50. There we go. Then for the text right here, let's change the font size to 55. And the rest looks about right to me. Then for the tablet viewport, this is where it starts to look a, a little bit weird. So the first thing we can do is actually change the direction from horizontal to vertical. Right now, these elements are placed next to each other. If we click on vertical, they're placed underneath each other. As you remember from the settings we set in the desktop viewport, the width of the content and the collections is set to 50%. So it will occupy only 50% of the space available. For this viewport, let's change this to 100%. Then we select the collections and also change it to 100%. Then there's quite some space between the headline and the subtext element. So let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's change the gap to 40. And for the rest, this actually looks pretty, pretty nice. Now let's go to the mobile viewport and right here we can make a few changes. The first thing we should do is select the main base row and we go to inside spacing because there's quite some inside spacing active right here. As you can see, 111 pixels worth of inside spacing. Let's change that to 40 and this already looks better. Let's also add 40 to the top and bottom this all looks good let's make the headline a bit smaller let's change the font size to 38 then we can change this font size to 18 and then the gap that exists between the content layer and the collection layer is quite big so let's change that gap to i would say 40 this is looking really really good now let's preview this looks nice on the other viewport this also looks good and this all looks really really good now one final thing we can do is add some hover effects to the buttons and also make sure that this button is linking to a collection first of all let's add the hover effects so we select the button layer we go to interaction and then under effects we add a mouse hover effect because only when someone hovers over this element, I want something to change. And what I want to change is the color of the button. So mouse hover is active, and then we set the fill to white, meaning whenever someone hovers over this button, the fill color will go from this pink color to white. We preview, we hover over the button, and as you can see, it becomes white. Then for these two small banners or buttons, we add the same effect, but then we reverse the colors. So we add the mouse hover effect, and then we change the fill color to this pink color right here. Then we do the same thing for this little CTA mouse hover, and we add this fill color right 
here. Preview again, we hover over this button, it becomes white, and with these two buttons, they become pink. Now, for this CTA, I select it under interactions, I add a click action, and then we have a variety of different options. Go to a link, go to a section, whatever. In this case, for the example, I'm just gonna add in a random link, google.com, but you can add in any link you want. Now, before we publish this to our Shopify store, let's make sure that we give this layout, in this case, a section, a name. So we open the section settings and then we call this Figma to Shopify. And then we publish this to our Shopify store. It's now published. And now let's go to the Shopify team editor and add this section to our homepage. Here we are within the Shopify team editor on our homepage. And right here, we can add a section. Then we search for the Figma to Shopify section. Here it is. And now we can add it to our page. This is looking really, really nice. Let's go to the mobile viewport. And as you can see, it's nice and responsive, just as we have built it within Instant. The beauty of building sections in Instant and publishing them to your Shopify store is that these sections are editable from within the Shopify team editor. So all the text fields can still be adjusted right here from within the Shopify team editor. Next to that, our sections work with all Shopify market features and Shopify meta fields. Then you can also reuse this section on as many pages as you want and also on any page that you want from the home page to a landing page, product page, you name it. Then with the Figma to Shopify plugin, we've just built a section, but you can also build entire landing pages, product pages, blog posts, your home page, or anything else with this Figma to Shopify plugin. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have a good understanding on how you can leverage this Figma plugin to go from Figma to Shopify in a matter of minutes and all without code. Thanks for watching and good luck.